who is Mark? Well, it's very confusing because his real name is John. Uh, we know that his uh, mother was one of the women who um, followed Jesus and financially supported his ministry. Her name was Mary. It's one of those many Marys we hear about. In fact, in the early church, they used to meet at Mark's mom's house. Uh, and listen to this. This is a little passage from Acts 12, verse 12. Peter went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who is called Mark, where there were many people gathered for prayer. Now, why is his name John, but he's called Mark? I don't know. I mean, I've done funerals for people. I've called an individual by what I thought their name was, Chuck, for years, and found out that their real name was James. So, I don't know. It was just one of those things, I guess. But it does get a little confusing. But we know probably more about Mark as a gospel writer than any other of the four gospel writers except for John himself. Particularly in Luke's writings, he refers to Mark several times. Mark was probably very young when Jesus lived. Um, there's some tradition that says that it was his mother's upper room where the Last Supper was celebrated. And so Mark witnessed all this and as he became an adolescent, he joined in the discipleship following Jesus, and he went with Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary journey. But he and Paul kind of had a falling out, and then he ended up kind of like the protege of St. Peter. And so even the church apologist, Irenaeus, in the first century, writes that after Peter and Paul's death, Mark, the disciple and interpreter of Peter also handed down to us in writing the things preached by Peter. And so what that implies is that Mark was a kind of a disciple of Peter. Peter, who was a first-hand witness of the events of Jesus and probably more intimately connected than many of the disciples, he passes on to Mark, and then Mark takes what Peter said and puts it in writing. As, as someone last night said, well, why did it take so long? Because Mark's gospel doesn't appear till around 65 AD. So why did it take him so long? Because the answer to that question is that in our mind, as soon as something happens, we want to report it. But in the mind of the ancient Jew, they didn't write things down. They had an oral tradition where they passed on story after story. And also, they... Um, the early church believed that Jesus was going to come back at any moment. And as they progressed, they realized that any moment wasn't in their lifetime. So that's why it became important to write it down. But Mark's gospel, this another interesting fact, is the shortest of all the gospels. If you look at Luke's gospel, there are 19,500 words. If you look at Matthew's gospel, 18,300 words. If you look at John's gospel, 15,600 words. And then when you get to Mark, Mark's is 11,300. So Mark is very concise. He doesn't spend a lot of time in dialogue. He's more focused on the actions of Jesus. And that combined with the urgency in Mark's gospel, the language that he uses. Mark, I think, is a little bit like me. He wants it done yesterday. It, it's like he's impatient. It's, he portrays Jesus as always like this urgent need to get things done. And so we find, for example, in Mark's gospel, he uses the word immediately 40 times. In the very first chapter, he uses the word immediately 12 times. He also focuses on terms of power and authority and emphasizes Jesus' power over demons, over nature, over illness, and even death itself. Unlike some of the other gospel writers, he's more focused on communicating the gospel to people who are not Jewish. He's clearly a disciple for the Gentiles. Here are some examples how he sort of caters to the non-Jew. 
First of all, there's no genealogy in Mark's gospel. Now, for the Jews, connecting who you are with who you belong to, with your ancestors, was very important. And so we see, like in Luke's gospel, the genealogy connects Jesus to Adam because it's a universal, because Luke also is dealing or focusing more on Gentiles. But in Matthew's gospel, the genealogy goes to Abraham because he's focusing, that gospel writer is focusing mostly on Jews. And in John's gospel, we have this very symbolic genealogy. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it connects Jesus there. Mark doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about that because he's focusing mostly to a Roman audience, and the Roman mentality just wasn't interested in that. It wasn't that big of a deal for them. Here's another interesting fact about Mark. He uses Roman time. This might be surprising to some of you, but the Jews and the Romans had a different way of tracking time. Did you know that? So for the Jews, the day began at sunrise, and the day ended at sundown. But for the Romans, a system that we ourselves still live with today, the day begins at midnight, and it's divided into 12 hourly segments. And so Mark refers to time on the Jewish way, so, or excuse me, on the, the Roman way. So he's clearly focusing on the Romans and not the Jews. He also interprets Hebrew and Aramaic terms and words. Mark is very aware that his readers don't know this stuff, doesn't understand the things about the Jewish tradition or the words. So when he uses one of those words, he stops and he explains what it means, or tradition. He stops and explains why Jews do what they do. Okay, that's a little background on the Gospel of Mark. Thank you for joining us today. If you like what we're doing here, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, SJE Plus, or like our Facebook. Also, if you appreciate this type of content, you know, we need your support. I often say that it doesn't, we don't do church to make money, but it takes money to do church. So please consider supporting us financially. May the Lord continue to bless you and your family.